Hello, gorgeous souls. Thank you so much for being with us today. It is a gorgeous sunny day in Costa Rica, and I am absolutely delighted to be here talking with a, a gorgeous, beautiful, epic soul that I'll tell you all about momentarily. And first, in case this is your first time listening to Conscious Conversion, we are a weekly podcast about how we're bridging the gap between business and spirit, money and meaning, technology and regeneration in a wildly changing world. In a time of so much damn polarity and uncertainty, this podcast explores how together we are connecting across the planet, across our differences, and across dimensions as we build the new earth together. I am your loving host, Sarah Yamtich, and today I am really, really deliriously excited to introduce to you the lovely soul, Makosi Hafisa Nejasar. Makosi is the royal shaman. She is the world leading African shaman specializing in spiritual business strategy and wealth energetics. She is a human potential expert and soul ascension master. Makosi guides individuals to create powerful transformations that amplify impact, and she teaches high performers to achieve limitless abundance beyond success. She has been called a spiritual advisor for elite entrepreneurs and empire builders. Makosi mentors disruptive leaders to make more money in alignment with purpose, guiding them through synarchy with their true self, legacy, freedom, and fulfillment. A fully initiated Sanusi Zulu shaman and trained in ancient Egyptian spirituality through the Dogon Mystery School, Makosi works to teach serious seekers how they can change the world, establish a euphoric business, and attain true prosperity. Makosi, it is fun to read your bio. I usually kind of like, it bores me a little bit to read people's bios, but I'm like, wait, Egyptian mystery school? Wait, Zulu shaman? Can we please hang out all day, every day and talk about all the things? <laughs> thank you Sarah, for being here. <laughs> thank you so much for having me. And uh, even when you're reading it, I'm like, oh, who is that? that? That's a cool person. And then I'm like, oh yeah, I went through all of that. Um, <laughs> But I'm super excited to have this conversation because uh, we are just at this really incredible time in humanity where we are burning down all of these limitations between, oh, you can't be spiritual and have a successful business, or you can't be an entrepreneur and also, you know, be living from your soul. So I am here for this conversation 1000%. I, I can already feel it's going to be really deep and rich. So as I imagine all your conversations are, as most of mine are. So yay. Um, I'm going to just dive in with the first question, which is in this incarnation right now on the planet, with everything that's happening in the world, with everything that's happening in your life, how, who are you and how would you describe your soul's purpose? So I definitely would describe myself as very multidimensional and I really believe in bringing all of me to all of my existence. So uh, I have many titles, many labels like mother, mentor, wife, uh, speaker, teacher, blah, blah, blah. But ultimately in all of those spaces, the the common theme or really who I'm here to be is to support people in really owning who they authentically are, creating, creating a life of freedom and doing that in a very grounded, practical way. I think most of us who've been involved in the spiritual spaces, it can get so phil philosophical all the time. And I'm like, yeah, but we are here to make this heaven, right? Like we can literally have heaven on earth and that can be our experience of life, but we have to be the ones who take that responsibility. And also when we do that, tap into um, our power to make this a, a game that we wanna play. I, I mean, everything you just said is so perfect for, for the show and for my life and for what I am endeavoring to do in the world as well, um, which is like all of these old systems are crumbling. All the old ways are crumbling. 
it's it, it can be really painful at times for sure because we've grown attached to those pro and dependent upon those that program and those systems um and it sounds to me like a big part of what you do is helping people helping to empower people to to remove themselves from that programming and to remove themselves from those systems so that they can be self-responsible, sovereign, divine beings creating the heaven on earth. Yeah, I mean, drop the mic, we're done. <laughs> Mission accomplished, that was it. <laughs> Awesome. Now we just have to do it. You know, now we just get to just do the thing. That's oh, all. wait, Sarah, damn it. We can't just say it. Oh, man. No, I'm just <laughs> oh, man. So, okay. What? So you're talking about heaven on earth and you're living in the DC area. How do you see heaven on earth around you right now already? Mm. So I think so many people struggle with seeing heaven on earth because they are essentially living in their imagination <laughs> and essentially in their imagination, whether they are um, imagining that the past was a utopia or imagining that the future is a utopia, regardless, they are essentially rejecting what is as if we did not create this, as if this is not supposed, quote unquote, supposed to be, but this concrete jungle that I'm in right now is supposed to be, otherwise it wouldn't, it wouldn't be, right? It seems very simple, <laughs> but the minute that we begin to just accept that this is the reality and instead of fighting it, then we can start to look at, okay, where can I connect? Where can I um, be in my full experience? So when I'm here, I see, I see spirit all around me. I see souls who are here trying to express their purpose. Um, I see, I mean, I'm at a hookah lounge and like what, what is more fun and awesome than <laughs> enjoying being in a, in a space surrounded by other people, uh, nature, so on and so forth. But it's, you know, that most of us think that in, in a heaven that, you know, maybe we would all just be like floating around wearing white and <laughs> always, you know, everything always provided for us, so on and so forth. But I actually look for where can I find joy and opportunity everywhere? Where is the abundance around me, whether that is um, financial abundance, because there's a lot of financial abundance right here, like Maserati parked outside. Um, <laughs> you know, I'm sitting here enjoying amazing uh, food that's actually from across the world, but these people came and, you know, created a restaurant here. All of these little, little things that we just kind of sometimes take for granted that is absolutely delicious. And like, I use some of these words for explaining existence, like delicious and, and, and sumptuous and juicy when we allow it to be. I love that because those are sensual words. And as a Taurus son, I, it's my season right now in the recording of this. <laughs> um, I, as somebody who loves sensuality, I, I, I think that that is something that is super grounding. It's really, really grounding to, to and, and when you're in this moment to be like, what is pleasurable right now about this moment? Yesterday, there was a torrential downpour in Costa Rica right before I had an incredible, impo incredibly important call, a meeting where I'm announcing a new program called Awaken Village, y'all, check it out. I was announcing announcing a new program on this call and electricity goes out. Normally that would have sent me into a tailspin of anxiety. And instead I was like, wow, I was walking to the car with my umbrella, getting drenched like a drowned rat and thinking like, wow, the feeling of this rain feels so good. And it feels so nice that it's warm out and it's cooling me off. And oh my God, it's kind of funny that this is happening right now, but I'm gonna show up 
to this call. I'm going to find the, the uh, restaurant with the generator. I'm going to be so grateful for that freaking restaurant with the generator. And I'm going to sh like show up exactly how I am and find the pleasure in every single moment it takes to get there. And just that reframe, even when things could be stressful as fuck, just that reframe like expanded my whole day and made it so much more beautiful. And that's something I have to continuously remind myself still. Yeah, it's so funny, you know, things, things like that happen to us all the time. And you would think that by this point, we would be used to it, right? Like we would be used to the fact that shit happens, right? And instead of looking at the beauty of it, P.S. I love a storm. Like a storm is life to me. I love hearing the sound of the rain. I love the smell of the air when it hits with the earth. And it just like, it just has this incredible crispness to it. But we get in our minds so much and, and attached to how we think things should be like what it means to be professional quote unquote professional right um even the fact that i'm i chose to like come here to a hookah lounge to do a, an interview right or to do my work so many people that's so they wouldn't even think to do that because for them professional looks a certain way it has to look like you know uh, a full-blown studio or a private office with a perfectly curated background, so on and so forth. And while those things are, can be nice and can create a, a sense of, of consistency and stability, it also is kind of boring. Like, wouldn't life suck if it actually was always what we wanted and thought that it had to be? Totally. I'm so, I mean, this can go into really deep places, right? Like in terms of like, if everything was always exactly how predictable and how we wanted it to be, if we had, if the second we had a desire, it showed up in front of us in the exact form that we wanted it to be. There's really no point to anything. It really makes life extremely meaningless to just have everything show up for you right away. The reason that I believe that we chose to be incarnated right now on this planet and, you know, as divine beings in our bodies is because we like, we enjoy the mystery unfolding. A, a friend of mine once asked me if you could know everything right now, because I'm a seeker, right? Like you probably are too. Like we're, we, we want to like uncover the mysteries. That's why we go to Egyptian mystery schools or I, I would love to someday. Like it's because I love to learn and I want to uncover the mysteries, but would I want it all to happen at once? I don't think so. Cause that takes away the fun of it. You want it just like when you're watching a really good movie and you never want it to end because it's so much fun to watch. That's what life on earth can be like. It can be the best movie ever. And you have to have those like setbacks in order to have, in order to have a reason to uncover the mystery. Yeah, I mean, the only thing that we have to do is come back to again and again, really inviting ourselves and and, and asking ourselves, I, I don't know, allowing there to be almost like a giddiness about like, I, I wonder what's, I wonder what's coming next, or I wonder, yeah. I wonder what this is going to unfold in my, in my future that I can't see. So I definitely am a seeker and I love to learn, but I also love to experience. And I think so many people really struggle with so being uh, future oriented. They spend all of their time and energy and focus in what we are, where, where we're going, that they make themselves miserable in where we are now not really connecting that that unfolding that's happening in the future where you want to go it's it's actually here in this present moment right now but you just have to open yourself up to actually see it and be present to it and fully experience it like i find so much magic in, in just little things like um, i bought i bought some new makeup and i love makeup by the way 
and the lipstick had this had this beautiful um it's like engraving carved into the mold of the lipstick and I could just sit and look at this lipstick for hours <laughs> because it's so simple and fascinating and to to some people that might be really really weird but if we let ourselves actually immerse ourselves in reality there's there's so much to love there's so much to um enjoy about this moment right now even when yeah, there are sucky parts too <laughs> yeah I'm, I'm curious like is there can you tell us a little bit I, I mean i know your life is so rich and so full that to, to say like tell us your life story would be ridiculous but is there some part of it i'm particularly fascinated by the sh shamanic work that you've done or by the mystery school work that you've done and both but is there a, one of those things like can you tell talk a little bit about the unfolding of yourself into um a shaman absolutely um for me it started before this life um so i even my mom will will share stories about the dreams that she was having when she was pregnant with me and, and certain wild synchronicities. And, and when I came into this, this life, I remembered who I was before. And um, as a kid, I was having so many experiences that just couldn't be explained in the paradigm that I lived in, right? Like I grew up in a, a very Christian household and some of the things that I was experiencing didn't fit in that box. And because they didn't fit in that box, I thought, oh, there's something wrong with me or I'm making it up, I'm crazy, you know, all of those sorts of things. It wasn't until um, a little bit after college, you know, I did the, I, I tried to fit in. <laughs> I did what most people do. I tried to fit in as much as possible. For me, that looked like, um, how can I be the most successful version of myself? You know, I saw that in the status quo, there are kind of like a, there's like a picture perfect image of what it means to quote unquote, make it, right? And that looked like the, you know, man and wife, the kid, the, the home that you own, right? Two, two cars, uh, you know, recognition in your job and a, and a high status role. And I got it very young. So like 23, 24 years old, um, I soared to the top of a, a direct sales company and was doing really well you know, flying for free trips, all of that good stuff, being on stages, being recognized, all of that. And it just felt, even though I, I enjoyed it and my life was good, I didn't feel like I was in my potential. I didn't feel like I was fully fulfilled. So I just started asking different questions, like not how do I get more money or how do I become more successful? I started asking questions like, who am I actually, <laughs> right? Like, who am I? What is, what is my greatest calling? And I started paying attention to the signs and synchronicities that started showing up in my life. And I allowed that to guide me versus my mind. And in that process, I was directly guided first um, into the mystery school that I spent uh, I spent three years in. I have to delineate in my bio between African um, shamanism and ancient Egyptian spirituality, but there's not a difference. Um, <laughs> a lot of people don't understand that um, ancient Egyptian spirituality is African spirituality. It's still practiced. It just is multicultural. It's expressed in different ways depending on where people live. So I spent three years in that process and that process was really just a, a deconditioning. 
it was a process of really challenging everything in my paradigm that I thought I knew and had crafted my identity around. And in that process, uh, we do what's called divination. And in divination, it's essentially a kind of reading, but the readings are really based around, you know, who you are, what you're here for, um, root causes of different challenges and issues that you're having. And there's usually a prescription, a quote unquote prescription of, it could be ritual, it could be ceremony, it could be a way of living, it could be taboos that are really meant to bring you into harmony with who, who you are here to be in this life. And in that process, it kept coming out. You're here to be a priestess. You're here to be a teacher. You're here to be, you know, um, seen in this certain way. But of course I resisted it. <laughs> I resisted and I, I was like, okay, yeah. You know, when I'm, when I'm like 50, because right now I'm, you know, I'm a mom, I'm a wife, I need to make money. And the more I resisted, the worse my life got. <laughs> so when I surrendered to that, um, more wild, crazy synchronicities happened. And I ended up dreaming of my spiritual mother and then meeting her a year later. And that took me to South Africa where um, I initiated to become a Sangoma or a Zulu shaman. And in particular, like we have different, different delineations or different titles or roles depending on uh, your calling and, and kind of who you're here to be. And so that's why, uh, you know, most of them would refer to me as a Sanusi because a Sanusi is essentially a soothsayer or a seer, uh, a spiritual teacher for the masses, but also this is someone who um, tends to work very closely with leaders of communities because we carry a responsibility of really shaping culture, shaping um, how people live in order to support them in staying in alignment and, and really having the space and capacity to, to live in their purpose. So that's like the summarized version, <laughs> but that unfolded over, um, over you know, a total of five years in that process. Um, thank you so much for sharing all of that. And, you know, one thing that's, that stuck out for me was when you said, you know, I have to, in my bio, delineate between the ancient Egyptian um, mystery schools and the, the shamanism. However, it's really the same from a multicultural perspective. And I, I, I'm curious if, if you feel that across the world, because, for instance, in Latin America and South America, we have like the the Incans and the pre-Incan even, you know, like there's, I'm about to go in July to a pre-Incan temple that I visited in 2018 that arguably is 35,000 years old, like the pyramids, if you take that that um, line of thinking, that sort of more ras radical cosmologist sort of thinking. These are like super, super ancient, um, multidimensional portal sort of temples that are all over the world. And this is a lot of what like the, the mystery schools are speaking to if I if I I think <laughs> and um, and I'm wondering if that includes like if you really look at the shamanic ancient indigenous sort of lineages and teachings there's a, probably a, a strong line of commonality and similarity across the entire planet. Um, if you're really diving into the purest form of those. And then you've got the, the lens of each culture. And so the gods and the deities and the goddesses and everything that come through that, those particular lenses. Um, it's really exciting, but it kind of doesn't matter which one you go down, right? Because you're gonna come to the same teachings. Is that, do you feel that's true? Yeah, I mean, 1000%, that's, that's what I learned. And also it's what I've observed through my own explorations, going and sitting at the feet of elders of a variety of cultures, um, they all essentially will tell you that at one point in human history, we all had the same spirituality. We all had the same um, 
spiritual system that was multicultural. And it was multicultural because depending, well, let me take one step back. At the core of the spiritual system is connection with spirit, right? Connection with earth, connection with the cosmos, right? So that's gonna look a little different depending on where you're located. Because for instance, you're in Costa Rica right now, right? There are certain um, influences of nature that are happening there that aren't happening here in the DC area, right? And so depending where you're located, you may be having certain experiences and culture is born out of having those experiences and creating, um, we could say they're coping mechanisms, but all of us have coping mechanisms to navigate nature in any given place. So I went to Tulum um, for the December 21st solstice in uh, 2020. And we participated in ceremony with some of the Mayan um, elders and heard their stories. And from their perspective, it was like, no, we have this, we had a singular spiritual system. And that allowed for human beings to have a, an interconnectedness, a commonality. And in this, because you're not claiming that you have the only God <laughs> or you only, you know, your way is the only way or is the right way. Um, it allows for more, um, more sharing. It allows for people to, you know, move from one place to another and it not be such a, a, a jarring deal or fiasco because the, the core of the spiritual principles are the same. It's just like, okay, now I moved to this other area and now, you know, I'm eating food that's different and has certain influences. I'm breathing, you know, air. There's certain natural phenomenon that are happening like weather, earthquakes, so on and so forth, that now I am trying to come into harmony with. So it sounds wild, but anyone who looks at it, um, you know, in the mystery schools that I was in, that they were going back a hundred thousand years. And there's even, you know, in South Africa, there are, there are, um, I don't even know how to explain them, but essentially temples that are 200,000 years old. So we're talking about something that's very, very ancient that still does exist but we have to be open to the fact that that could be that that could be a thing we have to get past like our um <laughs> our arrogance that we are the best of the best that we are the top of civilization that you know is never is never been <laughs> better so on and so forth and at the same time know that the goal is not for us to go back in time the goal is not for us to just like go back to how it was. The goal is for us to take, take those core values, understandings, that, that wisdom and translate it into now and, and, and continuing the unfolding of humanity. Yeah, I love it. I love it because it's, it's, I, I, we call it the ancient futuristic you know, or, or primal futuristic or something like this, where it's, it's like, there's something that where time kind of, it's that, what is that? The, um, oh gosh, the snake eating its own tail. That's sort of like what we're doing right now with the, with the time, you know, where it's, it's this cyclical thing. This is what the Mayan calendar and a lot of the ancient civilizations are, are showing us is this, is this cyclical thing where, um, time sort of folds in on itself. And I feel like we're having one of those moments right now um where we have this opportunity to bring in these not just ancient but super mega ancient <laughs> ways of being and bringing them into the present and into the future and it's super exciting i mean as somebody who grew up in a religious place as well southern baptist and i rejected that very early on and and had agnosticist agnostic and atheist leanings for a long time because of the religion around me 
And then to get become older and realize, oh my God, no. no, like there are amazing mysteries to be uncovered. And actually the divine feminine is so real. And I'm a priestess of that. Like I'm having remembrances of that. And, and it's the most exciting thing to, to uncover as, as I go through this life, um, to know that like, I too, as a, as a young child had synchronistic experiences and had sort of otherworldly experiences. I wrote them off so that I could be successful in this incarnation in this life and then had to come back to them. Um, and it, it, it is super exciting time to be alive, I think to, to start happening. And, and I'm, I'm entering into that sort of portal again of like things starting to really become synchronized. I'm about to go to Maui and, um, and Peru to, to pursue some medicine woman work with this, um, cactus medicine called Wachuma. And I'm so beyond excited. And I think that's another piece I wanted to bring into what you were just talking about is like in, in the different cultures all over the planet, you have different influences here. You'll have a torrential downpour that just means all plans are canceled. You've got to live in harmony with that. <laughs> <laughs> um, and, or you've got earthquakes or you've got, you know, but there's also, what are the plant medicines behind me? What are the different remedies that we have for different illnesses? What are the different um, sort of entheogenic or psychedelic medicines that actually give us an opportunity to commune with mother earth more directly if done well, if that done in a, in a correct way. Um, those are all also influences in, in our becoming that is super exciting. Do you, do you pl play in those realms very much with like the plant medicine realms? Um, so I do and I don't. So in my initiatic process, um, I, I never experienced any entheogenic um, medicines, but plant medicines were still a part of the process. So, you know, connecting with specific plants for for cleansing, for um, purging, for having certain herbs in my body to be more grounded where I am or in connection with my ancestors, so on and so forth. That was definitely a thing. I didn't experience entheogenic until uh, like 2020 and then was guided to work with, um, with, a, with a Mayan shaman. And I don't personally facilitate space for people, at least at this moment, who knows what's going to happen in the next, <laughs> you know, year, <laughs> two years, whatever. I'm, I'm not saying that that will or won't happen. Um, but I love that you also are making a very, a very, there's like a little nice asterisk there, right? That there is, there is a way that we go about it our intention and the environment and how we are approaching the medicine does have an influence on the results that we get. And then we carry a responsibility to integrate those learnings and those experiences into our lived experience because we do have, we have a trend. <laughs> there is a trend that's happening and I see it in two ways. One, that through the trend, um, these experiences become more norm normalized instead of seeing it as something um, demonic or dark or, or what, quote unquote dark. Um, and also at the same time, we do wanna make sure that we're approaching these um, spirits, the, the spirit of the plant in a very intentional way in a reverence um but we have to do a, quite a bit of inner work and unpacking of uh our colonizer mentality in order to do that and that's not fun <laughs> it's what they call shadow work i believe <laughs> yeah no one wants to do that they're like wait i just want to <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> I just want to take the medicine and have a great experience. Um, but we also have to like look inside and quote unquote, do the, do the work. Well, and that's where self-responsibility comes in. Self-responsibility is so, can be so exciting, right? It's like, oh, yay, I get to create my own future. And I'm a, um, 
I am sovereign divine creator, yay. And to really, really step into that, you also have to take self-responsibility for all the ways in which you are not ready for that, all the ways in which you might need to take some purgatives on a spiritual or physical <laughs> way in order to, you know, to, to, you know, I don't want to say eradicate because it feels too violent, but to really sort of dismantle those um, old programming beliefs about hierarchies and about um, power over and under and um, identities, you know, all of these things have to be sort of lovingly, compassionately dismantled within ourselves. Um, I think in order for us to fully actualize into being the clear channel for divinity. Absolutely. I want to hear about, I want to make sure we have plenty of time for us to hear about how all of this, which I could talk with you, I feel like for days, um, and we have an, you know, an hour, give or take long podcast episode. So I want to make sure that we take some time to ground as much as possible a lot of this into what it is that you do for for businesses, because you do specialize in the entrepreneur business realm and I have for the last many years as well. Um, so how does how does all of this that we're talking about ground into what you do in the world professionally? Ooh. Perfect question. Um, so my my brand, the Royal Shaman, um, also is a translation of the title Makosi. Um, so Makosi means chief or king, and but it's speaking about you know a healer in that regard because in the lineages I'm connected with, there's not a separation. Typically, royalty are the ones who are most spiritually connected because who do you want leading you, right? Like, <laughs> that's the point. So there's multiple meanings to that. One is that in history, the, the shamans, the oracles, etc., depending on their gifting, there are some of us who are here to be essentially, you know, the, the consciousness supporting leadership. And we're at a time where uh, the energy of money has a ton of influence. It is literally creating worlds. So if you understand, every time I spend a dollar, every time I, you know, go to the grocery store and I buy groceries, I'm making a vote for something. If I'm buying you know, organic, if I'm buying, um, you know, sustainable products, so on and so forth, that is the system that I'm creating, right? Because I'm making a vote for that system. So on the plane of business, what we see, or at least what I see, is that these are the leaders who through their innovation are creating the next structures for humanity. And we can fight this quote unquote fight the system, right? Or we can just build and create an alternative that is more desirable, more in harmony, more aligned for not just humanity, but all of us. All of us meaning every entity on this planet, right? The the rainforest, the you know, the land, so on and so forth. So I work specifically with entrepreneurs because if they are not challenging constantly and questioning why they are doing certain things or how they are structuring certain things or the decisions that they're making, they will unconsciously just continue to create what they were already programmed to create. And then we just create more of the same, right? So my role is really to be a truth teller and catalyst to just invite these leaders who have taken on a responsibility, whether they were aware of it or not. You know, as entrepreneurs, we influence, um, we influence our families 
we influence our followers, we influence our clients and our teams and have a ripple effect, right? Like all of the people that are associated with those people, there's also an effect there. So by doing that work closely with a small number of people, I get to have an impact that is much, much bigger without having to be the one who just goes and, and convinces everybody like, oh, there's this other system. It's like, I'll use my own, my own, my own business, my own team as an example, because my team loves working for the Royal Shaman. I love that, but they love our culture because we are constantly looking at how we can embody what we are trying to bring through in a real way. So creating uh, ways of doing business where the moms on my team are able to mom and also participate and guide and nurture and, and, and create, right? Instead of the idea of, all right, shut, shut your momming off at 9 a.m. and move on to now your, now your business person and then try to come back to mom. I personally believe that I need, I need everyone to bring all of them. I need those mom skills in the workplace, right? Like I need you to bring that. So I don't create these hard lines between them. You know, I have women nursing on my calls <laughs> because that's the world that I believe we need to create. So if I have a company like that, right? A company culture like that. And people want to work in that space, right? Then they're making a vote with their energy for companies like that. And then more companies will be like that. That's why I get so excited about the great resignation that's happening right now. That's what they're calling it in the US, but it's happening all over the world where people are just opting out. The problem with that though is you can opt out only for so long. There has to be something for, to, to replace that, right? So if we don't have companies that are embodying and standing for and creating cultures that people want to be in, guess what? All of those people, they're gonna run out of money, they're gonna whatever, and they're gonna end up back in the same situation. So it seems like kind of cool and like, oh, spiritual business and blah, 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 blah. But no, there's a very revolutionary, um, it's a very re revolutionary thing when we take it seriously, when we actually embody and integrate spiritual principles into what we are building, not just, you know, talking about soul, but what does that mean? This is my applause because this is exactly what I, um, this is exactly what I'm talking about on the podcast. It's like, how are we, what is the new paradigm? What is the new earth and how are we embodying it? I don't expect us to have all the answers, but I do invite us all to live into the questions collaborate with one another to to learn from each other's experiments as we build these new paradigms and these new systems and this new earth together and how like really embodying it like you just spoke to on a deep level in our businesses and in our lives and having things really be integrated instead of siloed is is 100 percent what what I think needs to happen in the world, what I'm all about, what my business is all about and what you're all about and what everybody I bring onto the show is probably all about. So thank you for that. Thank you for the beautiful, amazing, like leadership that you provide for your clients and for the world. Thank you so much. And I just also have to say too, Sarah, like, um, I'm fucking it up. Oh. Like just, <laughs> just so I'm clear, <laughs> I am messing thank it up. You. Yeah. We are all messing it up. I okay. am messing shit up left and right and center and up and down. There is and no then... way to not <laughs> mess it up. Right. But it's, 
it's when we allow yeah. ourselves to fail. It's when we allow ourselves to try things and we're like, oh, okay. So I know that that, uh, now I think this way of doing things in business did actually work. So maybe that's something that or this does piece serve of it us. worked, and this piece did not work. And that's yeah. why I say it's an experiment. We all have to experiment and then talk to each other about our experiments. We don't all have to make the exact same mistakes. We could each make different ones and then share about it. <laughs> yeah, like I, I was like when I first started the Royal Shaman and started bringing team members on, I was like, I want to completely decentralize the the creative process. And I want, I want to allow all of my team members to be, evol be involved in the creative process. And um, I basically gave them anxiety <laughs> in doing that because so many of them didn't actually want to be a part of the creative process and that there are a thousand ideas at any given time. And we have to then like, decide and decipher which ones we want to work with it was overwhelming because they're like oh my gosh how are we going to do all these a thousand ideas but we no we're not going to do all a thousand ideas we're just coming up with these ideas together but i was like okay so for us having a little bit of separation between like okay these are the team members who are responsible for the brainstorming the you know the visioning so on and so forth and then when we're ready to make it concrete, we have these other team members who now come in and support in bringing that into, you know, in, into reality. That's just one example, but it's happening all the time, but it can only happen when we question things and experiment. Beautiful. How can people find you if they want to learn more about you, soak up all of your sumptuous, juicy, <laughs> lovely, sensual, brilliant beingness. So these days I'm mostly on Instagram at the Royal Shaman. Um, you can find me there pretty easily. Also my website, theroyalshaman.com. And we are in the planning stages. Hopefully there will be um, a podcast slash YouTube channel being born very soon. Well, I hope so, because I, I imagine it would be a wonderful gift to the world. Y'all, um, Makosi's Instagram is gorgeous. Go check it out. And if you have any curiosity about learning more, working more, or working with Makosi, then um, there's a whole gorgeous world and some, may I say, gorgeous imagery on your website of you with like snake handling and just like super high priestess, badass babe um brilliance there so check out the website too if you want to be inspired thank you so much for being with us today and thank you all for listening and may you have a magical beautiful harm harmonic um and resonant rest of your day week and life <laughs> i love it thank you so much for having me sarah this was great <laughs>